Now we're going to draw out the animal that you've chosen. You can print your image out. You don't have to. You can draw it directly from the screen. It is easier to do if you've printed it, and I'm about to show you why. So drawing an animal can be difficult because we look at it as a whole, and you say to yourself, well, I can't draw links. There's a lot of information here. Now I'm just going to go over the simple outline, and from there we'll move on to applying watercolor. So, our links. I'm going to start out with drawing this log that we standing on. By the way, this project can be done vertically like this, or you can turn your pa paper horizontal, it doesn't matter. So, I'm going to draw this log and we're going to go from there. And if you notice, I am keeping things very, very light. You may not even be able to see the lines. These are just suggestive lines to help me when it gets to the point that I am going to use watercolor. And that, that is about as dark as you're going to want your lines. We want them to disappear when we apply the other mediums, like watercolor. Okay, so I have this rough outline of this log, and now I'm going to move on to drawing in the links. Now, we are not looking for perfection. Uh, I want you to try. I want you to really look at the animal and look at the shapes. Uh, I'm going to outline this drawing here in a moment to kind of show you what I see, what I'm looking at when I first start to draw this. I'm not looking for the details. Avoid that at the beginning. So again, simple shapes. Start with this little back paw. I notice that the paw lines up with this. So I kind of just put a circle to tell me that's where his paw is going to be. I do measurements. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a moment and just show you what I was looking at while I, while I sketched that out. Is I looked at things as small little shapes. Uh, the photo I have has some of these blocked out spots, but I just kind of guessed, I suppose. So I started by drawing his paws. It's just that little shape. And then I looked at the outline of the animal. All right. Where do these lines go? I'm not looking at the fur and the details. And there are things I know to look for that I know that there's going to be a belly right here that kind of comes in and around. And then another part that a lot of students miss is this front leg and how it cuts through the body here. So if you look, this comes down like this. And again, a very simple outline of the paw. And then this comes up. Chest is kind of kind of blurred, but that's okay. This paw again is just a circle, and again, it's a little little blurred out there, but I know that his arms raised, comes into the body, goes up to the head. Back leg. I'm just looking at outlines. I'm not even looking at details yet. Okay. Now the head is just this kind of oval shape. So I look at it and just created an oval. Is it completely accurate right now? No, and that's okay. All right, you work lightly and you can adjust if you don't like the way that it looks. The goal is, is to sketch it out the best that you can before you apply color. You do not need to use watercolor for this. If you have it, that is the goal. If you don't have it, uh, you can use whatever medium you want. I'll try to throw that in at the end of the video. So now I'm looking at the outline of the cat. So I'm going to avoid that because I'm going to continue to draw on here. So once I have a loose outline of it, I'm going to look at it, look more at the details, which I'm going to jump into right now and just get it prepped for, for adding paint. Please follow along.
Okay, there's my rough sketch of this lynx. Um, again, it's not perfect. I'm going to continue to work on it when the camera shuts off. Uh, again, just to really prep it for the um, adding of watercolor. So go ahead and give it a try. Really break it down into simple shapes, okay? Only look at outlines of things. And draw lightly. You should barely see your lines. My, mine might be a little bit dark for me, but it's so that you guys can see it. Okay, so we're briefly talking about using watercolors, uh, especially the ones you would find in class or possibly at your home. Um, usually very simple, you know, reggie bib of colors and usually kind of a mess. Maybe there's some colors that don't belong. So I'm just going to show you how to work with these. First of all, we're going to start out with light colors. All right, we're going to do a little mixing. And what I'm going to do is I'm focusing on the background which is going to be a one application situation. We want that kind of blurred out look. We're not trying to go too dark. So using the watercolors. Here's the process. Dip your brush, get it wet. Pick the color you want and get some water in there. Now, you don't want it too loaded up. So here's my suggestion. Once you get the color you want a little saturated, dip one more time, wipe, wipe, Come in again and apply. Okay, so that's pretty strong. I want to lessen that. I get my brush wet, wipe it off again, and just kind of spread that around. Okay, you don't want to go too dark on your first application. Keep it light because we can always darken. It's very hard to lighten after it dries, it's nearly impossible unless you have white. So you're not going to work. So apply the yellow, but what I want is more of a yellow green. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I come in here, I'm going to take some of my yellow and I'm just going to lay it down here on this plastic palette. Go for that. Then wipe the brush down, dip, wipe the brush, and then I'm going to take my green. Now if you get some cross contamination, just work through it. Nothing in nature is one solid color, so it's all right. I'm going to take that green, and I want less green, so I'm going to dip it, wipe it off, and then come in here and mix it. So I'm going to get kind of this yellowish green, and you should notice a difference immediately. Get a little more muddy, a little more green. If you mix too many colors together, you will get brown, so keep that in mind. Keep your color palette very simple, all right? My suggestion is, is to look at all the different colors you have on here and practice them. Uh, for my actual links, that's gonna be a little more work. It's a, looks like he's a little bit of a light brown. So I can come in here, take some of that brown, and keep it really light. really light. This should be first layer light. Okay, this yellow here is actually a little bit heavier than I want. So again, let me recap. Dip the brush. Start with your lightest colors. Mix them up. Get it wet. Okay, this is going to be too dark. So dip, wipe, apply. Then spread the color out. Okay, Practice mixing colors. If you mix too many, you'll get brown. Keep that in mind. So when you start this process, I'm going to have you start in the background. Again, we're going very light, one layer over everything except for our animal. I'm going to start with the lightest color I can see back here, which is like white slash yellow. So I'm going to take my yellow. Again, keep it very light. More water than pigment. And I'm just going to spread this on. I'm not going to overthink it. Um, I do have the trees kind of drawn in here. I can avoid them. It's not necessity, but for this case, I'm going to. Okay, I 
have my first layer of yellow down. Now I'm going to move to the brown. This will give me time, hopefully, if I put this brown down, that this yellow bit will dry a little bit, and I can come in and make it a little darker with a second layer. Okay, so I have this really loose, um, blurry background going so far. Uh, I'm not going to do the bottom part for you guys. There's no sense because it's just going to be a repeat of what's going on uh, up there. So now I want to add some more of the details that are in here. I got some branches going left and right. I got some greenery in there. Um, I'm just going to loosely add that in. No, no high detail. Okay, so again, here we go. stop here for a moment so I put some heavy paint on and I did it again up here um, again just take some water and move that heavy pigment around I do want these trees to stand out a little bit more anyway so that's okay but we'll see as we get towards the finish line on this we want the things in the background to be lighter than our subject matter okay we're gonna want your animal to stick out from the back not blend in so what I'm going to do is just finish up this background and again keeping it really light one layer maybe two but again nice and light nothing real dark i'm gonna finish this background and then we're going to jump to working on the animal itself which is a different challenge compared to the background okay now that we have the background one coated maybe two if you want some things to be darker but don't go any darker than two coats. We really want the animal to stand out from the background. So working on the animal, what you want to do is analyze the colors that you see. All right. Mine is kind of this orangishy brown kind of character. The picture's a little blurry, so it doesn't help me any. But what you want to do is pick the main color. What color is there the most? And for this one, I'm going to go with orange, but I'm going to put it on super light because I don't want to take these highlighted areas and make them too dark. For your animal, we're looking three coats of paint in these dark areas. That's my suggestion. And what does a coat mean? Well, what that means is this. You put all the color down, you let it dry, and then go back with, for mine, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown in there and uh, more orange into the darker areas. The darkest areas should get three coats, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wash this with the first coat, which is just gonna be orange, very, very lightly. I may even avoid a couple areas that are really bright from the sun because I don't want them to get too dark. Again, get your brush wet, get your pigment wet. Maybe rinse the brush one time. A little dark. And off I go. I'm also going to do a wash on this log because that is also in the foreground. It's on the same plane, same location as my link. So I'm going to fill this in as well because I'm going to make this part of the animal essentially. Okay, I'm gonna let that completely dry. Then I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna apply my second coat to the areas I want to be a little bit darker. All right, not the darkest, but the second tier. So let it dry. I'm gonna add a second coat. For the second coat, I'm gonna use a little bit smaller brush because I have that option. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna hit these second layers to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to be mixing in a little bit more orange and some brown. Again, I'm only hitting the areas I want to be a little more dark, not the darkest. Uh, the darkest will be done in the third layer. 
Uh, one other thing that I want to make note of, um, if you have an animal that is black, the fruit is black, whatever kind of animal you use, um, strongly advise really watering down the black. You don't want it to be just this really dark pigment. You want it to be lighter. You want to still be able to put coats on. You want it to be almost gray. So before you really get in it, make sure you are practicing on paper. Make sure that you're getting the consistency that you want. Uh, like this would be way too much right out of the gate. So I'd be like, okay, I need to add some more water to thin it out. And I'll do a quick example on the black here just because if I really load up the black, it comes out like pen. You don't want that. If you're applying black, you want it to be a little more gray. When it goes on, I even lighter than that. And just kind of spread it out. Okay? So you want this if you're going to use black. So you can fade it out. And you can always layer it to get it that dark. So I'm going to do my second layer. Here we go. As you can see, I put in some darker areas. Uh, I put it on pretty thick. Uh, I would probably advise doing lighter than that, but it's all right. I can work with that. So as you can see, I filled in the areas down under here, his back leg that's darker, in and around his face, and just underneath the paws. Now I'm looking for high detail because at the end, we are going to be outlining this with marker to really make the animal pop. So when we come back, I will be applying the third coat to this animal and talking about using the markers to really darken it up and make it pop. For coat number three, what we're really gonna wanna do is work small, all right? So now we really wanna focus on just these really dark areas and maybe add some texture, meaning when you're applying the paint, maybe you kind of actually add fur marks, okay? All right, we want to get a nice texture feeling to it. And again, all we're doing is really focusing on the dark areas. And then from there, we're going to come in and hit them with, uh, with marker to include uh, this, this part here. cut the film now and I'm going to finish doing uh, this third coat and we're going to jump to adding marker outline. All right so the final step is to add some marker or pen to your animal. Um, I'm going to actually just use a regular black pen uh, just to represent because maybe a lot of you don't have a fine point marker at home. If you do use fine point marker um, we just don't want to be using a wide marker okay so Something small to the point that can be very precise. So I'm just going to use a standard issue uh, Pilot black pen. So what I'm going to do now is kind of outline it, but add some texture, uh, fill in the face and hit like the dark eyes and the nose and other little details in there. Um, you'll see me putting accent lines for the fur. Okay, Just some things to show that there's some angular lines and that in, in underneath the paws, maybe where it uh, actually touches this branch. So just pay attention to the way that I'm outlining. If you want to go overboard, we're not outlining like a cartoon character. We're just trying to add some texture and bring the animal out from the background. So please pay attention. I'm going to go through a good chunk of the animal and then we'll stop and that'll be it. Okay, so for there, I'm just gonna for now I'm just gonna stop and uh, finish it off camera, and hopefully this was enough information for you guys to understand how to apply watercolor, um, draw out your animal, add details at the end. Like I said, I'm gonna continue. There'll be an image of of the finished product, 
So good luck to you. I will also be showing how to use some colored pencil um, for this project because I know not everybody's going to have watercolor uh, available. Do not go out and buy them if you don't have them because we will accept projects done with different mediums other than watercolor. So good luck.